most women start a business? Is it passion, money, or freedom? Welcome to Female Founders, the podcast that takes you behind the scene with women who are founders and CEOs to help you start and scale a successful business of your own. I am your host, Nagelia de Ravine. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Female Founders. Today, I will be having a conversation with April Ford, the current CFO and COO of N Buens Inc., home of Infinite Spirit. April is a graduate of Southern Methodist University with degrees in finance and accounting and has an impressive career in the financial industry. And she is the author of the book, 52 Weeks to Fall in Love with Your Money. Join me as I learn more about April's journey and her unique approach to financial literacy. Hi, April. Thank you for taking the time to have this discussion with me. And also, I cannot wait to see all the great work you are doing as a CFO and CEO of, of Enbrands, Inc. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. Now, can you tell us about your journey to becoming the CF, CFO and CEO of Enbrands, Inc. and how you have managed to help the company grow where it is today? Well, I'll tell you, um, I actually came from the banking world. Um, I worked in banking and commercial lending for about 15 years. Ooh. And one day, um, and it's kind of a crazy story, but my boss told me he wasn't impressed with me. And I don't know if that just bruised my ego or what, but I just went into a spiral. I was like, what do you mean? I went to finance school. I have a degree in accounting. I've done all of this. How can, how can you not be impressed? I was, thought I was the best at my game. And for this man to look at me and say, I'm not impressed, Impress. it wow. hurt me. It truly hurt me. And so what I end up doing, um, I, just, I just didn't want to go to work anymore. And I was like, I just want to do something different. So I was talking to Tamir, who uh, Nokio, as people call him from his stage name, um, about you know, this situation. And he said, well, why don't you come work for me? I have a company that I hadn't really gotten off the ground yet. I know you're, I see you as a big time executive. And I'm like, me? And he's like, yeah. And he just had this whole vision of me that I didn't even have of myself. And I was like, you know what? When I was in undergrad, uh, undergraduate school, my dream was to be a CFO. Like that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to sit in the C-suites. And so he gave me the opportunity and we've been running ever since. <laughs> so now, but what's make you get into financing and accounting? Because most people don't, we don't like numbers, but if you end up in financing accounting, you must like numbers. <laughs> I actually love numbers. I think that numbers don't lie. Right. And I always True. said that, but I'll be honest with you. If you want to know the real story, how I got into finance and accounting, um, I have an aunt. Her name is Codella. God rest her soul. She's she's my great aunt, my great aunt. <laughs> so she's like my great grandfather's uh, sister. And when I was a little kid, I wanted to sing in the choir. Well, I'm tone deaf, and I can't carry I can't carry a note in the bucket. <laughs> and so what ended up happening? Uh, they made I wanted to be in the choir. They wouldn't let me, so they sent me to the back to count the money at church. And so I just always thought that was my responsibility. So when I actually went to college, I thought accounting had to do with counting money, which it doesn't. But <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought I was going to be counting money. And that in I thank my church for even that opportunity because I took it very seriously. That was a very serious job for a young kid. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm counting the money. That's my position in the choir. <laughs> I got to tell who won the Sunday school. Uh contest so you know when they give money like they they gave the most so shout out to bethlehem baptist church shout out to friendship west those are my churches and my pastor my pastor now he really influences a lot of things that i do from his sermons to his teachings and things like that i know that i can do anything so i don't i never have fear when it comes to certain things so so pretty much that set you up to say uh, you you want to be an accounting later on mm -hmm. and get into financing and really being from the neighborhood that I'm from, I always felt like if I could just figure out how everybody else ran the money, then I could change the lives of a lot of people. Hmm. I figured that financial literacy, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be financially fluent. Thanks. So if I was financially fluent and I understood the money, not just knew how to speak money, but I understood it totally and I, it was second language to me that I would be able to change the direction of my community. So that was a big thing for me understood the money. I never heard anyone say that before. Well, but, a lot of us, you know, they tell us your credit cards, pay them under 30%. Right. 
They yep. tell us, you know, pay your bills on time. That's that's literacy, right? Yes. So when you know when you know how to read, you just know how to read, right? And a lot of times reading is memory, right? That's true. But when you actually I'm so sorry, when you actually understand uh and comprehend the book, it takes it to a whole different level, right? So when you comprehend something you read, it takes it to a different level than if you just read it. Because sometimes wow. we just read over things, right? We yes. just read over it. You just because you know the words. We don't really take it in, into to your heart, so or take it into your mind, into your consciousness. And so when you're financially fluent, it's fluent. Never look at it this way. You're right. We read a lot, but it's like even sometimes you read a book. Do you even remember that book ten years from now? <laughs> Probably not. You yep. thought. Wow, this makes a lot of sense. So now, can you tell us about N Brands Inc.? What is it all about? And then what this, what what's behind it itself? So N Brands is really interesting because we started as just a production company, and I say just a production company because Tamir has done some of the most amazing music. I know a lot of people know Drew Hill that he has uh, Beauty is one of his songs, which is a, a really a big crowd favorite. Um, he's done everything from DMX to Eve, so he's Trey song. So he has a lot of hits under the entity. And so when we started in brands, I said, we need another, you know, we need something else. And so we started and now we have in productions, uh, the entity productions, uh, which we're working on TV shows right now. We have mm. TV shows that'll be out by 2024, which we're very proud of. And they'll be on, on networks and we're working with some HBCUs and we're working with a lot of people to bring these shows to fruition. So we're very excited about those. We're also very excited about our food and beverage food and beverage side, sorry, uh, which is the in, which is infinite, which is what you we were talking about. Infinite is a tequila type product. It's a uh, agave spirit that we have that we are very, very excited. It's very good. I'm not even a drinker and I'm like, it's good. So uh, our owner used to be, he always is on Instagram on live. And I was, I, one day I was like, you should have your own tequila instead of drinking with someone else's. And it was kind of a joke, but I'm the type of person you can't joke with because if you tell me something, I'm going to see how we can make it happen for real. So <laughs> I got into the mood and I just started calling and researching and researching. And then I said, you know, we could do this. And so um, me and my team, I have an awesome team. Um, we got behind it and we started digging and we started searching. And that's pretty much how we got to this point. And so now we have our three, you know, we have all three sides, which we're very proud of where we do the music, where we do the movies and where we have the tequila. And we also have um, what we call the CBD brownies and things that we have in stores as well. So, so now with the, uh, with the breakfast itself with infinite um, the drink. So when is that going to be uh, available for people to purchase next month? So I know right now we're, when we're speaking is February 28th. So in March, everyone should be able to go to our website, infinite, spirits.com and and they'll be able to pick it up and they can order it and ship it straight to your home do you have any plans to have it in store itself or it's just going to be on the website yeah so we're working with a lot of different um a lot of different stores we're working with the marriott and renaissance hotels right now we're working with the hard rock hotels we're working with a lot of people to get this brand out one thing about uh infinite is that we're very proud of is that it is a hundred percent black owned and I know yes. that doesn't sound like a big deal in today's times, but it really but is yes. for us because within the um, within the spirits industry, only one percent of spirits are actually owned by black people. Now, we do have some that have celebrity names attached, but those are more name rights, naming rights and name attachments. They're not actually the owners of those of those spirits. This is 100 percent black owned and it's all ran by a group of phenomenal black women. And so we're very, very excited to take this. And, you know, it's a little different because we face so many barriers uh, going through this process. But we are going to be, you know, on that big stage. And so we're excited about it. <laughs> so um, when you say you can ship it, can you ship anywhere within the United States or can you ship overseas? What's the limit of the shipment for it? So we don't actually handle the shipping ourselves. We go through a company called Speakeasy. Um, they handle that for us. And I think it's 38 states. So you would have to go to the site and they'll tell you if they can ship to your states. I know states like Alabama is alcohol controlled, so they're not allowed to ship there. So any state that's not controlled by the state, they're allowed to ship. To ship. And um, now you are a former finance prof professor and have taught entrepreneurship to high risk young adults. Can you share with us some key finance, financial and business lessons that you, you teach your students? 
Oh, sure. Um, one thing I did, I did teach at a college called Mouse College, located in Birmingham, Alabama, Fairfield, Alabama. Um, it's the HBCU. I really enjoyed teaching there. I taught principles of finance under my um, my mentor, uh, Joanna Martin. She was my mentor and I taught her class. So that's how I got to, to teach. Um, so I was a professor of finance. And what I would always teach my, my students is there's levels to this. And you have to figure out what level you're on. Mm-hmm. And so once you figure out where you want to be, it becomes easier to achieve, especially your financial goals. If you're saying, hey, I want that 800 credit score, find the things that get you to those 800 credit scores. I also wrote a book about it. I wrote a book called Mm. um, 52 Weeks to Fall in Love with Your Money. Um, And you can go check out the book. And in the book, I talk about the the 52 ways to, you know, fall in love and find your financial freedom because everybody's not the same. Everybody doesn't want to own real estate. Everybody doesn't want, you know, to be in the stock market. Like I'm not a gambler, so it scares the heck out of me. So I have to have a broker. Uh, so it just depends on, you know, what your tolerance is and who you have. I, I encourage people to get a financial advisor that can really know your speed and know what your goals are. So now talking about your book. So what's the number one in the list from your book? In my book, I, um, my favorite chapter of my book is who going to check me, boo? And it's talking Ooh. about the credit report. The credit report is that nosy neighbor that tells all your business and they're going to talk about you and they're going to tell everybody things about you. So you got to keep your name clean in these credit streets. So I, I talk about that a lot in my book, keeping your name clean. And my book is really for like young adults as you're getting into the financial world. Um, and, you know, I, I have some older people that have said like, hey, it really helped me as well. So we just talk about the differences between the accounts. Uh, you don't want your your checking account is not going to give you little grandbabies called dividends and you come on the <laughs> dividends. So you check it, you know, check out uh, money marketing and other accounts that could help with that as well. But I like the way your book sound because it sounds fun. Like, um, because when people talk about uh, accounting, financing, serious stuff here, we're talking about yeah. serious stuff, but yeah. they w- when you pick up that book, it's like, oh, I am so bored. I want to fall asleep. But your book sound more like fun. It's kind of like the way, even the way you talk about it, it's like, it's different. It's like, I'm not just going to board you with a bunch of things that I'm going to turn it around, talk your language, the way you're supposed to understand it. Not the fancy way, but the easy way that you can put yourself in that shoe and understand what it's mean in your own language. And I think that's um, adults will love to read it. I would love to read it because when you start talking about numbers to me, you're giving me a headache. <laughs> My book is really fun. Everything I do is fun. I teach a class. Um, I, I do some traveling sometimes and I teach a class called Bad Bougie Not Broke. And a lot of people get into it and we, we kind of laugh about it. Uh, we talk about financial infidelity. Like, are we cheating because with our money, because we got those shoes hidden in the trunk of the car. I know when I was married, I had those extra shoes that I didn't bought and I ain't ready to take in the house yet. Right. And, you know, just really cheating with your money or, you know, falling in love with credit card. He's like the bad boy of the financial world. You know, they'll they'll tell you, I'll give you the world. I'm going to give you that 15 percent off to make you feel all fuzzy inside. But really, they're going to run up that interest rate. You know, it's like so you really didn't do anything. So it's like the guy you meet at the club, you know, he's all fine. You're like, yeah, he yeah. Me home, girl, we dance. And then you get him home. He's like, you know, eating up all your snacks and running up the bills. And you're like, yeah, dog, it wasn't worth it. So, you know, it's definitely we have fun with it. We have fun at, at the inbrands. We have fun. And I think I tell everybody our team is a family. Everybody that works for us, that works for the Embrand, they know that we're a family. We talk about things. I think that's very, very important in today's society that you have someone because that's the longevity side. People yes. always say people leave positions, but at, at, at the Embrand, people are like, we want to come work with y'all. So I was like, who loves to drink tequila, right? But we, um, we have a lot of fun. And I think that um, that is the barrier of the world. Like everybody forgot how to have fun. Everything's so serious. Everybody's yeah. so serious all the time. We like to have fun. And so, um, and that's my leadership style too. I love it. But now the names, every time you, put, every time you, you tell me a name of your book or of anything you do, and they always sound different and also always sound like, this is interesting. I need to know what it is about. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask why your names are so different? They, they like, Got your attention. I think I just like to have fun. Like, I don't want to hear anybody talking about principles of accounting. <laughs> Who cares about that? <laughs> I don't. 
<laughs> but when I, if I tell you there's levels to this ish, you're going like, what levels? Oh, what are you yes. About? Yeah. You know, if I tell you, you know, you could be bad, bougie or broke, you'll be like, hold on. Oh, what's that? About? What you talking about? <laughs> you know, you know, if I tell you, you got a financial soulmate. Then you're like, hold on now. Yeah. Now, who is it? Who's my soulmate? So I definitely like to make everything interesting. Even when we talk about the inbreds, when we talk about, you know, infinite, it's an interesting tequila. You know, we're not, I'm too old to be a city girl. So I'm not like puppy. I don't, you know, I'm not young Miami to puppy. You know, no kids, my puppy. I'm not, uh, I'm not young Miami. I'm not, I can't, I can't do all that. I got kids and I got to go to work the next day. But it is a grown people tequila, right? We're, we're, we're more R&B. We're more laid back, you know, and it's, it's sweet, it's good, it's having fun, it's keeping the wrinkles away. <laughs> it's relaxing. And that's what I pride myself on. Everything we do has purpose. And in that purpose, you know, we want to see everybody happy. Now, I'm curious to know why Infinite? Why that name? Because there's infinite possibilities. Mm. There's no limit. You could, there's no limit to it. You can mix it. You can drink it straight. You can have it with your girlfriends. You can drink it alone. You don't have the headache the next morning. So you could drink it on the work day. You could drink it on the weekends and turn up. And then you can still get up the next morning and clean your house. Because we at the age where we clean our house on Saturday morning. But we going to do our errands, child. We ain't got time to lay around all day. It's a whole different vibe. And so there's infinite possibilities to the vibe. And I think that um, when we come up with the name Infinite, so all of our companies start with N. That's what I just call different brands. Uh, when we came up with Infinite, it's just, there's just so many possibilities to this tequila. There's so many possibilities for us to, um, to do. So I, I just thought it was a fitting name. <laughs> so now why if we think start with N? What's the meaning of the N? The N is just funny because of Nokia. <laughs> like, our <laughs> name is Nokia. <laughs> And he already had N to T before I even started working for him. So he was, they call him the entity. And so it was N to T. And so we just started naming everything with the N. It, it really has no big purpose to it. It was just, it fit the brand. <laughs> it's thin for him pretty much. It N represent him. Yep. So all of this is, is his inspiration, you know, um, I, I call myself the executor, but it's really his inspiration. He inspires, he says things. Uh, he tells all his friends, I can't say anything in front of her because I'll have it before the end of the day. He'll have it. It'll be on the website by the end of the day. So, you know, we um, we just believe we dream big. So everything is just in. I don't know. So I think that's uh, one of the reasons why um, when you say that everything will be on the website the next day, that's mean that you love what you do. You enjoy what you do. When you say something you feel like that can help other people, you want to take it to the market and let people know, hey, this is something that actually can help you. And also mm -hmm. one thing you said about the drink that I like is the fact that you're not going to have the hangover in the morning. Because mm -hmm. a lot of time that I remember when I was young, when, when I have a drink or something like that. It gives you a headache. You go to sleep. You go to sleep with the headache. You wake up with the headache. And that's not something if you're going to work on Monday morning, you don't want to drink on Sunday because you're, you're going to have a headache. So I think that's something that's very cool, too, to let people know that you you can have that drink and you'll be fine in the morning. There's no big deal to it. And we love that about Infinite. Like, I, I promise, I think we tried to test it one time to see if we how many drinks we could have and still get up and function the next morning. We really went through a lot to make sure Infinite was the product we wanted it to be. Um, and we can't guarantee that nobody will have a headache. I guess it, yeah, it goes sure. on your body and your, and you know, so I don't want to put that out there. And then we have all kinds of lawsuits. Like you told me I wouldn't have a, a headache, but for, for <laughs> us, there was no headache and it was a smooth taste. And we get a lot of people that compliment on, on the fact that it's smooth. It's a sweeter tequila. It mixes really, really well. So we, we, we love it. So we, like I said, everything has a purpose. Everything has um, something connected to it. And, and we really feel like it's, it's just a different vibe. It's a, it's a whole different vibe than what's on the market right now. And I think also um, when you say that also it's based on um, your body because everyone's body is different. Some people, they drink just a tiny little bit of alcohol. They start vomiting. And, um, it's all depends to how your body handles alcohol because not everyone can body can handle alcohol itself. Yeah. 
And I've had people say, girl, I, I took a shot and I, I first it didn't hit me, then it hit me later. So we, we, we've heard a lot of different things, but we also, every time people say the same thing, I was able to get up the next morning. I didn't have the hangover. So I think that's a really cool thing that people are saying that about it. Like, hey, I did, you know, it has a smooth taste and I didn't have the hangover. So. Mm-hmm. But regardless, it might happen to you because your body might take it in a different way as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now with an infinite uh, spirit has been successful in using co-funding and social media fuel its growth. Can you share with us some one, like one, like, for example, the uh, how did you actually as the CFO to be able to create co-funding co- funding to to bring it out to people? Well, we didn't crowdfund. We didn't crowdfund for Infinite. Um, actually, we funded through other entities. So we do have other projects that we were able to uh-huh. fund Infinite through um, and then putting in, you know, having private investors that invested in the Infinite product. But we did not crowdfund, but we did fuel the flame uh, with social media. So we have a social media manager uh, who's also our art director, uh, Joseph Um who, you know, he manages all of that for the in-brands and he's been able to really create a space in that market and get the attention of a lot of people in order to bring them to the page. And we have a lot of people that are on our waiting list that are excited to get it. They're like, when is it going up? I feel like people are going to start protesting in a minute, but we're coming, we're coming. Um, And so, yeah, so we were able to increase that through through social media and through Nokia's personal page, through my page, through the infinite pages, we've been able to really grow it um, a lot. Okay. But you really didn't go out for funding uh, by crowdfunding. Well, that's actually even better. I found a way. So it's so funny. When I started doing infinite, everybody said, you're going to need all this money to do it. I found a way to do it without needing all the money money as people were saying. So I say always get you a good CFO that can look at trends that could really dig deep into things, find companies that help you um, and kind of accomplish your goals. Cause that's one thing that I really focused on. So pretty much you try to think outside of the box and uh, do you really need to spend all that money? Is it really necessary? Yes. Cause we had companies that said, Hey, we'll do the whole thing for you, but it's going to cost 200,000. Like, wow. I'm yeah. I'm not doing that. Cause I don't even know we're going to sell 200,000 worth of like, like, I don't know. And this was in the very beginning stages. I'm like, I don't know if we're going to do that. Like, why yeah. would we do that? Then we would have to do the crowdfunding and come up with all the money. So I was like, eh, we're not doing that. So I did all the research. I researched it out. Um, and we were able to accomplish it for, oh, uh, like. A Way lot cheaper. Less. Yes. Yes. A lot less. And so it's, it's definitely been a blessing being able to um, understand the numbers, understand the trends, understand when companies, um, you know, what companies do what, you know, and kind of putting it together yourself. So we did it. I'm telling you, it's by hand. It's, everything is by hand, by hand, all the sourcing. By hand. By hand. Do you guys get to pick the flavor and anything like that that's going to be on it as well? Yeah. So we did, a ta- we did tastings. We tasted a lot of tequila. Let me tell you, a lot of tequila. It's like, let me tell you something. Not the end of the work day. We're like, we're lit. But no, we, got, we had to taste a lot of tequila to get to the one we wanted. So uh, and to get to where we want it to be. And we're very excited. We we love our makers We uh, down in Mexico um, and they really did it the way we wanted it to be done. So we're excited about that. So now do you um, do you plan having more than one flavor on it or it's just going to be just that flavor? No, we actually have a reposado that's coming out a little bit later. Right now we have our Blanco and then we have a reposado that's coming out a little bit later on. So you'll be and adding on to it. Growing. Yeah. You might see infinite vodka next year. We don't know. Like Ooh. I'm telling you, like we go with wherever God leads us, this is where we're going. Not if God, <laughs> you know, God made water in the wine. He didn't really make tequila, but you know, no, I'm joking. But wherever, you know, wherever the journey takes us is where we're going. We're not going to focus on uh, staying in one place. We're not going to be stagnant. We're going to try to take over the market. Um, we want to be that brand of tequila. We're going to take over that market. I think that you can. It's, it's, it's like when you're talking about it, you're passionate about it. It's something that you really, really love. Yeah. As the CFO, everybody, that, everybody you, come have a shot with me. Come on. Come on. You know, I want to be an inspiration to girls to say, hey, no matter if they tell you this is a man driven market, no matter if you are a woman of color, no matter who you are, come on, let's do it. it. Yes, we can do it. Whatever God has for you is for you. At the end of the day, whatever God has destined you to be, 
I think that he sent Nokio to me to tell me that this was where I needed to be because everything we've done from the TV side, the TV side, I'm telling you, it's like so amazing the shows we're doing and dealing with the HBCUs and dealing with everything we're doing on that side of it is really been awesome. And our production team, the crew, everybody. And it's funny, everybody calls me the boss lady, but I'm far from that. I'm, I want everything to go right. Like I'm like, let's go. And so I think that is so many people that tells us what we can't do. There's very few that tell you what you can. And I think if you have a dream, you have the passion and you want to make it happen, it's going to happen. Just go Just for it. it. Write the dream, make it plain. I write down everything I'm going to do all day. I write down what the end goals are. I write down what we're going to get accomplished and I write the dream. I make it happen. You make it happen. So now when you talk, talk about this, uh, the production part of it, so do you produce TV shows and commercials and things like that? Not really commercials, no, but TV shows, yes. So we have three TV shows that are slated to come out next year. I really can't tell you what they are, but we yeah. have three TV shows. I know, we have to come back. I have to come back. I have to come back and talk to you. But we have three TV shows that will be out next year, and I'm very excited about those. We're working with, like I said, we have one that we're working with, some really awesome HBCUs. Uh, we have another one um, that is more of a movie-type situation um, that we're kind of facilitating. And then we have another one that is kind of like the, I don't know how to explain it, like a docu-series type situation, but they're all dope. They're all really good projects and I can't wait for the world to see them. I'm not as, you know, I'm not an actor. I told you I can't sing. I can't do none of that. <laughs> but uh, I do think that the three projects that we have are going to be something that everybody could be interested in. Um, we have some, one of them is, you know, we're working with the Hard Rock to produce um, a concert series that we want to air on TV. That is going to be really awesome. It's going to be a vibe. It's going to be infinite. It's going to be the infinite vibes, you know, so we're excited about it. And we, um, with, the, with the project for Hard Rock, is it going to be in Las Vegas or in a different city? Oh, it's going to be in a different city. It's going to, um, and I really can't d tell you everything <laughs> about it, but see, see, you have a way of bringing stuff out of me. I have to watch you. I have, to watch you. I have to watch you, okay? Um, because I wasn't even supposed to say that much. See how you do me? You see how you do me? But um, it's gonna be awesome, and I'm gonna make sure that you know about it before it gets out there. How thank you, that? thank you. I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> so now, as a successful um, black businesswoman, what advice do you have for other individuals who are looking to break into the industry and make a name for themselves? Be yourself. Hmm. So many times we feel like we have to be someone else and I'm guilty. You know, I've put on the voice or did my hair a certain way to try to fit in and you don't have to. God made you who you are for a reason. Just you're be beautiful. You. You're intelligent. You're exactly who you're supposed to be. And that who you are is what's going to take you the furthest. You know, when you humble yourself and say, you know what, God, lead me. It works. And I tell you, I tell people that all the time because I remember people saying, you can't be an accountant. You're a loud mouth cheerleader. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm here. And so God to use his angels, which is I, I call us people angels. I, I think God uses his people to uh, to make his purpose. So whatever your purpose is, that's what he's going to do. So never let nobody tell you what you can't do. It's a lot of haters out there. So when yes. I talk to young girls and they say, Oh, I'm loud. I can't be an accountant. I'm like, the numbers numbers speak louder than words, honey. What? Every time I talk to somebody, I'm like, them numbers talk right back to me. So that's why I enjoy them so much. Um, just be who you are. Don't try to hide who you are. We spend so much time hiding. Okay. Don't hide who you are. Just live in who you are. And I think that it will all come to pass. And you'll be, you'll be excited. You'll be, you'll be just be fine. Successful. You'll be just fine. You'll be excited. You'll be just fine. You'll be successful. You'll be happy because we work these jobs we're just not happy with. And we live our life in misery. God don't want us to live in misery. That's not, that's not, that's not our purpose. That's not our purpose to live miserable. So find what makes you happy. I'm so happy I left the bank. I thought the bank was my end all is all. It wasn't. That wasn't my final destination. And I don't know if infinite is my final destination, but I'm thanking God for the ride, right? So yes. I, I definitely um, say, just be yourself. Just be yourself. The opportunities that come to you. 
Yes. So now as a CFO and a COO, are you ever think of starting your own business? No, I don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I actually love what I do right now. Um, I love being behind the scenes. And I think that, um, which is weird because I'm the one doing this interview, <laughs> but I think this is because it's a woman's magazine. Y'all <laughs> put me here. Um, I love being behind the scenes. I love seeing people's businesses grow. And um, with Infinite, I, in my mind, I've created a table, right? And yes. I've created a table for women of color to be seen, for people of color to be heard. And that's always been important to me. That's like a goal of mine. Um, so no, I don't think about that. I think about growing Infinite. I think about creating more spaces for uh, women who weren't offered the positions because of maybe the color of their skin or the yeah. way they wear their hair or the, the country tone to their um, their voice um, because they maybe use certain colloquialisms or anything like that. Um, I'm creating a table and I control what we eat because I create the menu. And I, love I control what we're eating because I'm creating the menu. So as long as we keep creating the menu and long as everybody's fat and full, I'm happy. So no, I don't even think about anything else. <laughs> Not only that, everyone in the table has a voice. Everybody has a voice. Everybody, everybody, everybody can say they grace at the table because we're going to we're praying and we are eating over here. That's, <laughs> and that's what we do. We pray and eat. And I. I, I love that. I love that. I love that God is using me to create the table. Boom. Absolutely. And you have been featured in several magazines and I have also <laughs> secured three upcoming yeah. television deals, as you mentioned earlier. So what are your future plans and goals for the company? Um, I don't know. Y'all are asking me to do this more and more. And so it's kind of funny that people want to talk to me. So I guess I got to get my, my speech down. Right. So I won't freestyle like I am with you right now. Um, I think that my goals with the company is to grow it. My goal with the company is to expand our HBCU um, internship program to give viable internships to students of color. My, uh, my goal is to, you know, we want to come for uncle Nears. Like, like I look up to Fran Weaver. So trust me, I think she's the bomb. Like, I just want to go up and be like, hey, girl, how you doing? Like, I want to go up and talk to her. Even though I know I can't. I have no idea. I follow her on Instagram. I'm a low key stalker. I'm like, oh, she did this. So, you know, I, I think she's amazing. But um, I would love to meet her and I would love for Infinite to grow to that level. You know, she's she's in the bourbon side of, uh, you know, I'm on the tequila side. She's in the bourbon side. She's like. She's light years past me, but I think that, you know, if we could catch up, you know, man, we're going to crank our rocket up and try to, you know, get to where she's at. So that that's the goal is to grow it. We want people drinking infinite. We want, you know, I keep laughing. I tell my, I tell my nephew, like, I want y'all to make rap songs and put infinite in it. Like, I can't wait for that next level. And so, um, and that's the goal. I think whatever you put your mind into April, you can accomplish it because you're that person that you don't stop until you get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much, April, for talking to me, for giving me the chance to finally have uh, this, that discussion with you and for the work you are doing, especially for young black women. Uh, sometimes we've been pushed very far, even in, from school to home to family members. Sometimes it's even happened at home. Uh, strangers, we've been pushed away as, as black women. And then we... We get older, we think that we need to be in the back end and do everything and give everybody else credit for them, even that we are the one making it happen. So what you are doing, it's absolutely amazing because we need to do it, not just for black women, but for all women in the world in general. And one thing I always say about that, too, is that um, I always talk about my team because I know it's not just me. Yes. My team, Lashante Williams, Tracy, everybody. Uh, Everybody, I can't say everybody's name is like escaped me just because I want to talk Tracy Morgan, uh, Yana Turner. Like our, our team is amazing. And without them, this would not be happening um, because I can't do everything. And one thing about a woman that lets like you ask me about going into business, I will definitely tell her to know, know what your strengths are. 
Yes. Know what your strengths are, know what your weaknesses are. And then you find that need and you fill it with someone who that's their strength. You fill it with a person that can do that. And I think that's something that I could say that I've done in this process. And I can say that's what Nokia has done as, you know, as the, as the leader and then me right up under him, I've been able to uh, really direct and I, and I thank him for allowing me to like, he's yes. just like, whatever she said, you know? And, and I think that's awesome that we have to give each other a chance. And I think once we give each other a chance that we could, the, the world's the limit. We have so much influential uh, influence over so many things. Um, even in the spirits business, $4 billion, $4 billion is spent from people of color. It's a lot. $4 billion. Why are we not buying our own? Exactly. So that's the way it's come for people like you that stand up, say, hey. Buy us. We're all exactly. here. Yep. Yes, we are here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Paula. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for having me. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for the interview. Thank you for listening to Female Founders Podcast. That's it for this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app. Or connect with us on warmel.com so that you don't miss our next episode. See you next time. Bye for now.